Okay, so I've uh, given the board a, a clean, uh, not a very good one, but a clean nonetheless. Um, and I think I definitely need to use um, some stronger rubbing alcohol because um, it's it's got rid of most of it, but I also need some lint-free cloth as well, which will just help clean it up and just take it away. The trouble is, as you're moving the uh, flux around, it just resets further down the board. So the worst thing you end up doing is sort of spreading the flux all over the board, which is pretty much what I end up doing. So I'll, uh, I'll probably have a good look on YouTube, find a better way of cleaning these. Um, it's, it's clean enough, my fingers aren't sticking to it anymore, which is, a, uh, is much nicer. Uh, anyway, let's give this card a test. So I'm just going to uh, pop it down there, so that should be okay for you guys to see it. Um, <clears throat> right, okay, so the first thing I want to do is just try powering the card on. So I've got this uh, cable here, um, which is uh, a bit cobbled together again. Uh, but what this will do is it will just allow me to pick up the connections on the back here. So uh, I need to bring 12 volts into the uh, the leftmost pin and then ground into the middle. And the end one is actually the uh, what's called the V-diagnostic. So that will power past the computers that uh, can be switched on or off depending on what you want to do. So all the switches where you can control the individual bits of the computer uh, by hand, they'll only have power from this bus, which means then you can turn that off so you can't accidentally get the computer to do something you shouldn't be doing while it's turned on. If that makes any sense at all. Uh, right, okay, so what I need to do is pop the card there. Let's pop it there. Uh, right, plug that in there. And uh, just from my bench power supply, just coming down from above on the shelf, I'm going to just bring uh, the positive 12 volts onto the left hand one and then the ground onto the next one. And then just make sure they're not going to short each other. Uh, now with that in place, then I should be able to turn the power supply on. And you get a noise. Now that noise sort of looked like um, it was probably something shorting out, but that, that should be okay and that should be what I expect to happen. And what that's doing there is it's just put the hold relay on, because uh, the idea is by its default mode is whatever volt, whatever values in this uh, latch registers, it should just hold them in place. Now I'm going to take advantage of that now to do some testing with the card. So if I quickly take a tap off of the positive 12 up here, just be very careful again not to short anything out. Now normally the um, the gating relays here will uh, will bring the signal in and uh, cut it off when it's uh, when it's supposed to be holding a value. Uh, so it's impossible to load, when you load the car base, it will drop all the values off of these relays and then uh, load in the new value. Uh, what I'm going to do is take advantage of the fact that by default it holds these values on. So that should mean if I come here and tap some voltage down there, what I'll do is that I'll bring relay zero on and because the uh, hold circuit's on, it'll keep relay zero on. So after that point, no matter how much I touch the positive side of this uh, relay uh, coil, it won't make any difference. Well, that does mean is I should be able to bring on the, uh, LED, the LEDs and the relays one at a time. So if I bring them on like this, what I'm doing is just bringing them on in order to just make sure, one, that they're working and the uh, light's coming on down the bottom. And that just tells me then that the circuit's okay. Good, that's all there. Um, and if I cut power now, it'll just go off. If I bring power back on again, get the click as the uh, hold circuit comes in, and I should be able to do this in reverse order. And again, I just want to make sure that each one of these is coming on, as I expect, in the right order. So if we, oops, just caught the uh, select line there. Um, so if I just bring those back on again. So this is the problem with having this probe, is that you do have to be a bit careful on what you're touching. Uh, and then again, we'll, we'll come in the reverse order here. Good, so I'm happy that's all working as it should do. And uh, now what I should be able to do now, but just did by accident a second ago, is I should be able to load these lines. Uh, so if I go for the positive side of the uh, LED down here, uh, that will try and load the lower amount, the lower um, eight bits of this. Um, and because that's connected directly to the signal, if I tap that down there, on the back of the LED, that should load that value. So it's basically loaded it. There's nothing coming in from the uh, gating relay, so effectively it just wipes all the values out. And of course, now I can bring the values back in again, like so. Uh, likewise, I can hit the um, the load high, which is just down here. So again, just being very careful. I'm going for this bottom left LED. There you go, and that just loaded those off. And you can see it's left this one behind. So that's doing exactly what I expected it to do. 
bring these back on again. If I can get it, I need a better probe for this actually. I do have a probe somewhere actually, I should probably use it rather than um, hitting these with uh, this crocodile clip. Um, right, so the other one then is basically, as well as loading these independently, you can also load it as a whole off of the uh, address bus. So by hitting this top LED here, that loads the whole lot. And you can see that that wipes out the whole lot of it. So again, I should be able to bring these on back again. So I'll bring them into a different order. And again, this is just proving to me then that there's no cross wiring here. Loading one doesn't accidentally load another. And there. Cool, okay. And the only other logic then is the select low, which was select the lower values on, which I can't quite get to. The select high. So again, if I go for that, that's effectively just activating the gating, but you notice it doesn't lose any of the values on the uh, register. And then the other one I can go for at the top here is the select both. So that's actually gated both that one and that one onto the uh, address bus. So the idea basically with this is here, here you can gate whatever values you onto the address bus as a 16-bit value, or you can select the lower half onto the data bus or the upper half onto the data bus. And likewise, you can load the upper half from the data bus or the lower half from the data bus or load the whole lot from the address bus. And that's why this basically is 16-bit registers so, uh, so flexible on what you can do with it. Um, likewise, I can also activate these from the jumper block up here. So the idea here is that these, these lines here are basically for controlling this card. So that's basically relating to the, the load, um, load the high and low, load high, load low, uh, and the selects. Um, so there's basically six lines here. And the idea is that I can wire wrap these off to the connector at the back to configure this to either be a uh, jump register or I can configure it to be an XY register. And all I'm basically doing there is the exact same circuitry. It's just linking to a different part of the um, just to a different part of the um, the connector on the back here, uh, which makes this card quite nice because it's quite configurable, quite easy to use. So likewise, if I come in, I should be able to select high and low on the first one. I should be able to select uh, high, so I select low there, and select high there, and then I should be able to load high there, and load low there. And the final one then is just being able to load high and low just there. So that's all the six connectors are working at the back. So that all looks to be uh, working as I'd expect. So the question now is, uh, can I test the gating? So what I want to do now is actually bring a signal into the uh, board and make sure that I can gate it properly and that it's uh, it's working as I'd expect. Cool. All right. Let's see if we can do that all in one take. So we'll uh, we'll turn that off. Uh, well, I should just say then, just when all items were on there, it was showing three amps. Um, so uh, that's. A reasonable amount. Um, right, so uh, what do we need? <clears throat> so I've got my trusty old board here, uh, which will allow me to um, set on these these jumpers here. I can set a value. Um, so what I want to do is I want to bring in, uh, take the signal coming off of these, and say bring that as the lower eight bits and that's the upper eight bits into the address bus over here. Uh, sorry, over there, uh, and then actually just try just the eight bits here as the data bus. So we'll we'll do the simplest thing first. What I should have up here is a cable that allows me to wire these out. And I'll see if I can find out where I put it. Okay, so it turned out my magic lead was actually in the computer at the moment um, because I'd run out of ribbon cables. So actually, I did get some more ribbon cable. Uh, which go here, so I can actually make, rather than use one of these that allows me to wire out uh, the connectors as I need, um, I can actually uh, make a proper cable now. So this is just a 40-way cable, so I'll, I'll do that a bit later. I'll probably video it as well. Um, so what we want to do is I'll go for the data bus first. First problem is going to be is a trial and error part, so I know I know there's a, uh, a connector somewhere here. Um, so I think... The data bus comes in on. I'm going to go with these ones first. So I'll, uh, just bring that one in, and then it will be the that one there, I think. 
So I think it should be right. And what I should be able to do is if I uh, if I have the load line on, uh, then what I should be able to see is uh, as I click these on, these should come on in order. Now, if they don't come on in order, it's more like I've got this wired out wrong. But once I do have it wired out right, they should be basically exactly as I expect them to. Uh, the other thing as well is I can connect one of these buttons over to the load line. Just going to get a little jumper wire here. Now what I'll do is I'll come out to my croc cable. And then I'll hook that over to the um, to the load line. So remember, I'm going for the load line on the other side of these jumpers. So I want to be able to load um, I'm going to load the loaf at the moment. So I'm going to hook that up to that. Like that. Cool, all right, so if we power back on again. So if I now click that button, I should get a load loop. Actually, I won't do it unless I've got power coming into this board, which I'm missing. So just turn the power supply off again. So normally I'd skip all this, but I thought for a change, I'd show you exactly what I'm doing and how this all gets set up. So again, I hope you like it. If you don't, you can always skip it. Um, so I'm just going to bring, again, I'm going to load the low in. One there. That's going to go to the other side of my switch here. I need some power, so I'm going to take the power off of this middle one here. That's then going to come onto my negative rail of this. So this is very messy, but it's only just a quick test. I mean, the ultimate test for this would be to basically put it in the computer and try it from there. So again, another crocodile clip on there, and then I'm just going to pass this through to the positive here. Okay, so that should give power to this board. So if I power on again, there we go. And I have got a short somewhere. I think that's because that was probably touching two things. Let's try that. That's more like it. So you can see that's loading the load, which is what I want. So if I basically bring some of these switches on, and I intend to have to use my wire wrap post for this. If I bring on bit one, it sets bit three. So I know that's on back to front. Um, so if I turn that around and try again, that's bit one. So that should bring on bit two, that should be bit three, and that should be a bit four. That's good. If I try and bring on bit five, that's not going anywhere, so that means I've got the wrong block there. So what I want to do is bring in this one, I think, and I've got a feeling that'll be Needs to be turned the other way around. So now I can spring on number four, five. Yeah, that's good. Six, seven, and eight. So that's good. So exactly what I was expecting. Um, so now if I switch to loading the high rather than loading the low, which is the tiniest writing on the screen on the screen print here. That's it there. Uh, what I should expect to happen now is if I knock, say I'll knock all the bits off except for the highest bit and the lowest bit, I'd expect to see this one and this one come on, but this should stay exactly as it is. And that's exactly what happens. So I'll bring on, um, let's bring on three and six on my switch block, so it should miss, should bring on that one and that one. Fine, and let's fill in the middle. And then do the edges. Cool, so I know that's working exactly as it should do. If I set all bits off and load, it should wipe them all back out again. So that's because that showed from the exact same data bus I was able to load those values up with no problem. Like so. What I should be able to do now as well is if I bring these connectors over and drop them over to this light block here. The whole idea is that this can load from the from the bus, but it can also write back to it. Uh, actually, what I'll do before that is I'll put a bit more of an interesting pattern on, just so I can verify it's actually doing the right thing. So that's what I've loaded into the register. So what I want to do now is bring these lines over directly, like for like. And what I should find is when I select the register onto the data bus, I get that value coming through onto this here. Um, so what I'll do is I'm going to move this now over to the select low line. 
And what I'm expecting to see is this pattern here appear over here, which it does. So I get the off, on, off, on, off, on, and so on pattern. If I change this to the select high, which is this one here, then I should get the other pattern, like so, because now it's reading it from the from the upper half. Okay, so that's data uh, data bus loading and reading all working as I'd expect. So what I want to do now is try the address bus. So actually, as it stands, I've got the lower half of the of the eight bits. So if I move this over to here. So I'm now taking out the data bus and putting it to the address bus. So if I put this over here, so we'll test the selecting first. So that's now to the address bus. And what I want to do is I want to now select high and low, which is going to now, rather than put it onto the data bus, it's going to put it onto the address bus. And what I'll do is I'll just to prove that, I'll try selecting the high and nothing comes out. I'll try selecting the low and nothing comes out. And that's because they're both going onto the data bus, not the address bus. However, if I'm selecting the high and low, what should happen is it should come out on the address bus. So here's what I get. Now, interestingly, what am I seeing here? So we have, it's not quite as I'd expect actually. So we do have the off, on, off, on pattern, which is what we're expecting down here, but I can see I'm missing a bit here. So it could just be that that line's not coming through uh, through here. So that's something for me to debug. Um, so I know one of the lines isn't going through. So what I'll do is I'll get the um, uh, I'll get the multimeter on that. Just make sure that's okay. Just give them a little squeeze. Make sure they're okay. What I'll do is I'll just try moving that over. Just make sure it's not my test board that's doing it. Now there's definitely a problem on there. So that's those. So that's the lower part of it. So what I'm going to do here now is I'm going to move those over to where they came from. I'm going to try bringing out the upper 8 bits over here. And if I select, there you go, I see the upper one. So I see the uh, on, off, on, off, on, off pattern coming through there, so that's all fine. And what I'll do is I'll quickly have a multimeter around here as well, because obviously you're not testing every single bit here. Uh, in fact, what I can do is if I cheat again and bring all these bits on, I should be able to then check that they're all connected. So let's do that quickly now. So if I do the select, get all the bits there, which is exactly what I want. But I think on the lower half of the address bus, one of those lines isn't working. So I'm expecting is if I bring these over, like so, and do a select again. See, there is one of those bits missing, and it's the it's bit on here, bit 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, it's bit 5 that's gone. So it's probably the gating on there that's not working too well, so for some reason either that LED's not working or there's a problem somewhere. So that's good, that's fine, I can check, check that out, no problem at all. Uh, right, so what I want to do then was load these. So I'm going to take these over here. Bring them over there. So now I have all 16 bits of the address bus ready to go. So if I turn all those off, I'll set this over to load the address bus. And if I give it a click, everything should go out. Which it does. Interestingly, that was touching the wrong line there. There we go. Cool. So, bit, first bit. Second bit, third and fourth, fifth and sixth, seven and eight, then onto the upper one, one, two, three, four. This one I'm expecting not to work, it has worked. Six, seven, eight. Now that's interesting, that means that's loading OK, but it's not outputting OK. Um, interesting. Let me just uh, bring these cables over and just try to select again. Just make sure I'm not going mad. Sometimes you can have like a, an intermittent fault on these. So if I take that back over to 
load again. I'm expecting number five not to come through. Right, as you see. <clears throat> so it could just been a faulty line or I've just woken it up. I'm gonna have to keep a very close eye on that because that's coming through absolutely fine now. All right, that's annoying, but sometimes happens. Right, so if I try knocking these off in the same order, uh, I want to load now. Probably losing the light as well now, so I better, better hurry up so I can take these off in reverse order. Three and four, five and six, seven and eight. Two, 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 seven, and finally number eight. Cool. Okay, so that's all working as I'd expect. So uh, right, let me have a little tidy up, and then we'll uh, we'll come to a close. Right. So there we go. That's all the uh, chaff out of the way, and uh, back to the card. Uh, so, what's next then for this? Um, so. What I need to do now is build uh, three of these because there needs to be uh, three identical cards going in and that's the whole point why I use this uh, PCB which is uh, obviously a lot quicker to put together. Um, all these are soldered in so there's no chance of the connectors failing. It's been a lot cheaper actually. I mean the relays themselves are costing about a pound each but uh, so obviously this card's got you know a fair bit of cost to it but not as much as the other ones. It's not been as fiddly either. Um, so say about making three of them, well actually, um, two Blue Peter style -y is the one I've built earlier, so uh, I've already got two of them here. Um, so I just need to build a third and I'll just do that in my own time, you don't need to see that because you know exactly how it works, it's exact repeat of these two. Uh, and the difference is that this one I'll wire out so this will be configured as the, uh, or the we need an M register, uh, that's going to be one of the registers. Uh, this one I'll configure as the J register. Um, and then the last one is a XY register uh, and these are just the names basically used for. So the M will be used to uh, store a location in memory where we're going to save things, so that's why it's 16-bit. Uh, the XY typically is used when you branch to a different point in memory, you can save where you've come from so you can go back to that point. Um, so that's quite useful to do, otherwise you can just use it as a general 16-bit register so it's just useful for anything like that. Uh, and then the J register is uh, stores the location where you're going to jump to. So again, if that's actually a routine where you're going to go out, do a routine and then come back to where you came from, uh, or it could just be a case where uh, you jump to a location in memory depending on a certain event. And this is where the computer gets really interesting because that's where you can start doing logic like uh, if a number's greater than zero, jump to here, if it's not, then carry on. Uh, you can also uh, make reusable bits of code as well, so say multiplication. You could put a little area in memory where it's got that little subroutine, you could jump to it, do the multiplication, then jump back. So that's where the computer gets really, really good. So that's next. Uh, I think in terms of next video, what I'll do is I will do a video configuring these cards up uh, and then actually putting them into the computer, which sounds quite straightforward because it just should, should be a case of just slotting it in. However, what I'll also need to do is, of course, wire up those buttons on the front. So I need to uh, label those buttons up. So I have my, in my, one of my magic drawers, I have some switch caps here. So these are the uh, buttons for the... Um, for the switches on the front. So what I'll do is I'll label those up and I'll put them in the front. So again, I'll, I'll do a time lapse of that or something, so that might be interesting to see. Um, yeah, and then basically we're we're getting really far then. So um, after that, it'll be a case of putting the, um, the control logic in the computer to do things like branching, jumping, and so on. Um, but yeah, lots to look forward to, but we'll leave it there. All right, thank you for watching again if you have been, and um, see you all soon.